Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to the third day of Modern Masters 2017 previews. And we got some more big cards to talk about. You can see a couple on the screen there, more on those in just a few minutes. But all in all, we have over 20 cards to talk about, so I want to get started pretty quick. Now, before we do get started, just a fast reminder, if you check out the description below, you'll find a couple ways to help support the channel, one of which is the Amazon Affiliate Store. If you make any purchases through any Amazon sellers via those links, a small percentage will come back to help support the channel goes a long, long way. I want to thank everyone who pre-ordered their Modern Masters booster boxes through those links. That really helps more than I can even tell you. So thank you. Thank you so much. They're still available on there, but obviously they're a little more expensive now. The going rate at this point, pretty much in all the marketplaces that I can find, is between 205 to 215 most of them falling in between like 207 210 so uh, if you didn't purchase them a couple days ago they are a little higher right now unfortunately and that seems to be pretty consistent across the board but if i find a deal anywhere i'll definitely let you all know as soon as i can secondly there's also a link to patreon and it's another way to help us out as well and there's details there as to how to get your hands on one of these limited edition heroes and legends classic art tokens like you see on the screen there. All right, with all that out of the way, let's talk about some cards. We got a lot of them, and we're going to start off with a mythic. You're already looking at it, as a matter of fact. It's Entreat the Angels. Okay, so when I see Entreat the Angels, first off, I don't necessarily think modern. I think more Legacy, maybe Commander, uh, but I think of the Miracles deck in Legacy. Also, this is another one of those soft mythics, at least financially. It's a 4 or $5 card, and it feels like we're seeing a lot of these cards that are like 4 to eight nine dollars at the mythic level and they do feel a little bit soft for expected value however i am okay with that as long as they give us a lot of value at rare and they have done that so far i mean fetch lands damnation goblin guy there's a lot of great cards at rare and strong uncommons will go a long way to make me feel better about some soft mythics too yesterday we saw some amazing uncommons i hope to see some more so i don't necessarily mind them distributing the value in the set through the rarity levels a little bit better than they have in the past. I think that was one of the problems with Modern Masters 2015. It was kind of like good mythic or bust with that set. There weren't as many great rares, definitely not many good uncommons, unfortunately. And it was hard to want to crack open packs of that set, especially when you did finally hit a mythic and it happened to be something like Comet Storm was very disappointing. Whereas if you have more hits that are maybe middle of the road, like some Path to Exiles and a Damnation every once in a while at Rare, all of a sudden you feel a little bit better about investing in a pack or two here and there, right? So I don't think it's necessarily bad, but they do want to give us some mythics that really have some punch to them. And they have, and we're going to look at a few of them in a few moments. All right, next is actually one of my personal favorite cards, Lingering Souls. I won a tournament with this one time, uh, but this is a phenomenal inclusion. It's not financially very valuable. I mean, you can pick these up for under a dollar, quite honestly, uh, but they see a ton of play in modern right now. And you see them in a number of different decks. I mean, maybe the biggest one's Obzon currently, but they show up in a lot of places, not to mention some legacy play here and there too. So this will be a phenomenal card for the limited game. I think this is a fantastic inclusion. Speaking of fantastic inclusions, here's another one. It's Lamvala, Keeper of Silence. Now, this is a nice inclusion. You don't really think modern when you think Lamvala, honestly, right? <laughs> but she does see some fringe modern play. Sometimes in the Obzon Evolution deck, you might see her one of whenever that deck does show up, which isn't too frequently. But aside from all that, I think it's a good mythic because it has some value to it. $40. She didn't get a reprint. She's originally from Rise of the Eldrazi. Didn't get a reprint in the Front of the Vault Angels, which I think was very shocking at the time. So it's nice to see the reprint here i'm glad they kept the art i think they have amazing art on this card very iconic at this point all right the next card is more of a limited card it's momentary blank and they're using the art from the dual deck from not too long ago not too much to say about this card it's a card that maybe sees a little bit of pauper play but that's about it you can pick these up for about a quarter or sometimes less uh, but the reason it exists is because azorius has a blank mechanic going on in limited so this is the perfect card to fit in there. All right, this one's kind of interesting. <laughs> and I kind of laughed a little bit when I saw this. They included Seance at Rare. Uh, this is a Rare from Dark Ascension. It's never been reprinted. It's only about a 50 cent card. Doesn't see any modern play or anything like that. 
But there's a weird story behind this card. Many of you probably are familiar with it, but if you're newer to Magic, about a year, year and a half ago, back when we still had some modern Pro Tours, uh, somebody had basically put out the call to either, I guess, send them seances and they would pay for them, or if you could just simply destroy them and show proof that you destroyed them, they would pay you for that. And it was almost like they were trying to like corner the market on the card. And then they were offering bounties for people to build the deck and do well in the Pro Tour with the deck, like if they could win the Pro Tour or get the top eight or something like that. So <laughs> people were actually doing it too. There were people brewing these modern decks with Seance as the like primary card. And it couldn't be like a one of in the sideboard. Like it had to be like the primary card. And you did see them showing up occasionally at tournaments for a little while. But obviously the card wasn't strong enough to hang in there. And the person that was trying to corner the market didn't do a real good job because it's only 50 cents. <laughs> so I think though that this is more of a message from Wizards than anything. Obviously when they were creating the set, this was probably hot news and they probably said you know what if people are going to think of doing any sort of silly social media stuff like that again in the future we're going to kind of fire the shot and say you know what we're watching and we're going to reprint seance so i guess the bad news is now we have seance at rare and our modern masters 2017 set <laughs> but i guess the good news is lots he's watching for that sort of manipulation and they are paying attention to it so i guess there you go all right, next we have another card from that Legacy Miracles deck, and it's Terminus. So much like Entreat, I really don't think of Modern when I think of this card. And it's not a very expensive card, at least this one's at rare, but value-wise, this is maybe about $3, $4 nowadays. It has never gotten a proper reprint, but it was in from the Vault Annihilation. It really goes to show you, though, that Wizards is taking full advantage of reprinting these Miracle cards now that they have the chance, because probably they don't know when they're going to have an opportunity like this again, so they're getting them out there. In some ways, maybe I would have expected them more in a future Eternal Masters release or something like that, but they are cards, again, that do need a reprint, so Terminus I think will be great in the limited game for sure. All right, the next card is a limited card again, and it's Mist Raven. Fantastic limited card. There's not too much for me to say about it, though. It's not very valuable, just a few cents, but really there for the limited game. All right, now here's a little bit of a better one. This is a fantastic rare, actually. Phantasmal Image. It's from Magic 2012. Has never seen a reprint. And these go for about $7, $8. They see extensive play in Merfolk builds and Modern. So because of that, this card will always be in demand. And I have a feeling if it wasn't reprinted here, it would continue to climb. This could have been a $15 card in a year or so, I think, quite easily. So I'm very happy to see it reprinted here. This was actually a fantastic card in Standard back in its day, too. You just get a lot of value for two mana, and you can strike pretty quick. Even though there's a high-risk reward, it's still a really good card. All right, next we have another limited card, and it's not a heavy metal band from the 80s. It's Abyssal Spectre, and thankfully it has new art. <laughs> so the new art actually looks pretty sweet, but I will admit, I kind of like the art that you see in the background too, although I can't imagine that being on a Magic card nowadays. Uh, there was actually a third piece of art when this card premiered in Ice Age, which was kind of almost like a watercolor, I think, painting. There's not too much for me to say about the card. It did just sneak into Modern being an 8th edition, but it was in a lot of different places over the years. Supplemental products, a lot of the core sets, of course, originally Ice Age, like I said, and it's only a quarter card or something like that. I do kind of wonder why they didn't just print Hypnotic Spectre, though, instead of this one, but okay, this is what we got. All right, next we have another limited card, and it is Bone Splinters. Now, I don't have a whole lot to say about this card. It's been printed a whole bunch of times. You're probably pretty familiar with it at this point. But I will say that it does at least give you a window into what the limited game is going to look like. We've talked about Rakdos having the Unearth mechanic attached to it in previous videos. Well, this is a great way to make Unearth even better by having awesome sack outlets like this one. So now when you Unearth your creature, you basically get it back from the graveyard for a turn, now you have a sack outlet perhaps to get additional value out of that creature before you have to get rid of it. So you'll see a couple more cards that do that in just a few moments. 
Next, we're back to another big one with Death Shadow. This was spoiled from a Japanese language spoiler earlier today. Uh, but this is actually a pretty big deal because this card's real hot right now. As a matter of fact, just a week ago, it won a GP. And that particular GP had three copies of Death Shadow decks in its top eight. So this card's been hot over the last couple of weeks and has been spiking pretty hard due to the extra attention on it. So it's kind of cool that it got reprinted here. It was never reprinted before. It was from World Wake, and it holds some nice value at least currently it's at about 15 17 dollars i mean not super super expensive because you have to take into account that's the top end of the spike and will probably be going down very quickly now <laughs> but at the same time it's a great card to reprints and death shadows decks i mean the decks named after it and also can show up in eight rack decks too all right, the next one is, again, back to a limited card with Extractor Demon. Uh, this one has been in Conflux as well as a number of supplemental products. It's like a 30-cent card, basically. And again, it's an unearthed creature that is really here for the limited game. All right, this one, I couldn't get real great art on it, but Nine Zombie. Uh, this was actually an uncommon from Magic 2014. It's getting the bump down here to common. And again, it's just another sack outlet that will work well with your unearth cards. Okay, we've been waiting for this. <laughs> here she is. She made it. And there you have it. Liliana of the Vale. This was spoiled today by LSV in a Channel Fireball article. Uh, this was my lock for the set. I've been saying all along, this card has to be here. They can't make the set without it. I mean, all that equity that they built up by finally reprinting Damnation <laughs> would have gotten wiped out if they didn't put this card in the set. It just needed to be there. When we were doing the speculation videos last week and last and the week before, I mentioned there's three cards that I feel are pretty much a lock. It's this one, it's Snapcaster, and there's one other that we're actually going to see in just a few minutes. Uh, but this, like I said, it just had to be here. The disappointment would have been way too big if it didn't show up. So she made it into the set, and she's valued at $90, $95 at this point. Sees tons of play. Obzon, Jun, Death Shadows, 8-Rack among other places and also a lot of legacy play for this card too really great to see her here and i mean i don't know if we're gonna see goif or not i mean i still think there's a good chance we'll see tarma goif but if we don't she's gonna be the big money card of the set and even if we do see goif she's still a huge money card so uh, great inclusion happy she's here all right, here's another limited card. I don't know how you follow that, but you follow that with Mortician Beetle, apparently. And a little interesting fun fact, this was a rare in Rise of the Eldrazi. It's got the bump down to common, and I don't know, it always felt super underpowered for a rare. I guess it's a one drop, that's why, and it has a decent ability. But again, it's going to work well with that unearthed sacrifice mechanic. So that's why it's here, and it can now be played in Popper if you're looking for something like this in it for your Popper deck. Speaking of cards that can now be played in Popper, this one's actually kind of exciting. Magma Jet bounced down to common. This has always been an uncommon. It's a great burn spell. As a matter of fact, granted, yes, not a very expensive card. You can pick these up for under a dollar easily, but they do see modern play, especially in Scrub Red decks, for example. So real cool inclusion, and it introduces something new to Popper again. All right, we have another Mythic, and this one is Past in Flames, and this has some new art on it as well. Now, financially, again, it's another soft Mythic, 3 to $4. It does see Modern play, and actually sees a fair amount of Legacy play in Ad Nauseam decks, but in Modern, you'll find it in kind of the Gift Storm style decks. I, I do like the new art. I always like the old art on this card, too. You see them both here, actually. Uh, but there's something about the new art, like her smile, that after it looks like she burned down the castle, it's pretty cool cool. So I'm a fan of both pieces, but I'm, I like the new one quite a bit, I will say. Here's another actually very nice reprint at Rare, and it's Pyromancer's Ascension. Uh, this was from Zendikar and hasn't been reprinted yet. $7.15, so there's some decent value attached to this, and it does see play again in Modern Storm. All right, that brings us to another limited card. This time it's Vithian Stinger, and this sees sometimes a little bit of popper play. It got the upgrade to uncommon this time around, so you won't find it a common, but it is another unearthed card, and it's going to combo really well with another card we're going to look at in a few minutes. All right, here's another big one. This is actually a pretty decent mythic right here. Crater Hoof Behemoth, 
$25 value right now on this card, that's actually pretty good. At least it's not another $4 or $8 Mythic. Granted, I'm sure it will go down a little bit with the reprint, but still, even if it sticks around $20, I think that's pretty decent value. Again, I don't really think a modern when I see this card. I think more Legacy. This does see play in the Legacy Elves deck. Don't really see it in the modern Elves deck, typically. Uh, but that's fine. It's still a great casual card. Phenomenal inclusion. Really needed a reprint. All right, here's that third card that I thought was definitely a lock for the set. Abrupt Decay, and I'm really happy to see this one. Nice value on a rare here. $8 card, easily, all day long. Sees play in a ton of different decks. Obs on John, Death Shadow, Obs on Company, Dredge, just to name a few. It sees a lot of legacy play on top of it. So... Here's the deal. If this card wasn't reprinted, again, even though Return to Ravnica had a huge print run, I mean, you got to consider $8 cards out of Return to Ravnica. That's a feat in itself, especially at the rare spot. <laughs> uh, but if it wasn't reprinted here, I could see this being a $15 card maybe by the end of the year. I'm happy that it made it in. All right, next we have another card that got the bump down to common and will be available for the first time in Popper. It's Burning Tree Emissary. This was a fantastic card in Limited back in the day. This still sees some modern play in some zoo decks here and there nowadays, uh, but great card. I always really loved playing with this, either Limited or even in Standard back in the day. And now it's open up to the world of Popper as well. Next, we have another card that got a downgrade in rarity, and this time it's Falconrath Aristocrat. Now, this was a mythic. This time around, it's a rare. It does see very, very small amount of modern play sometimes. Occasionally, you run into those Rakdos, like zombie vampire decks, and they're not very frequent in the field, but I have seen them, and those decks will run this card. But other than that, I mean, financially, it's not a big card. Two to three dollars, that's about it, but I think it's a fine rare. It definitely will be good and limited. All right, we have another mythic to look at, and you probably recognize it already. The art's pretty striking on this card. Sphinx's Revelation. And it's another kind of soft mythic financially. This is a 4 or $5 card. It does see modern play in various control decks. This was huge and standard back in the day. And there was a time it just felt like those blue-white control decks were really the only show in town. They were just taking down tournaments left and right back in that time period when it was Innistrad, Return to Ravnica before Theros came out. And this card was actually kind of pricey back in those days. It's come down quite a bit now, but it has never been reprinted, so it's kind of nice to see it. But again, it feels a little bit soft financially at the Mythic spot. All right, now this is the card I was alluding to earlier when I said it would combo really well with Vithian Stinger, and it's Basilisk Collar. Now, a week ago, when we were talking about colorless cards that we're speculating might be in the set, I did say if Basilisk Collar's in the set, it's more of a happy coincidence than anything due to the fact that when they were designing the set, the card probably didn't see a whole lot of modern play, <laughs> uh, but it was spiking really hard last week. It has been dropping already this week. I think at the points of before the reprint anyway, the card was down like $6 this week, so it's going to continue to go down, but that's only because it spiked really hard. It was up to above $20 earlier in the week. So having said that, right now the card sits around $16, $17, maybe $18 at most, and it is on its way down. But a lot of players have been picking this up to play in the Eldrazi Tron decks. It combos really well with Endbringer, combos with Walking Ballista and those decks. So it's a phenomenal inclusion. I'm glad to see it. Again, it's probably nothing more than a coincidence, but really happy that it made it. Having said that, those are the cards for today, and we saw some good ones. I was very happy to see Liliana, Limvala, even Abrupt Decay. So I think the inclusions are very, very solid. Like I said at the top of the show, yeah, there are some soft mythics, and it's not going to feel great when you open some of those over others. However, I think the balance in the set will make up for that. If you start opening a couple fetch lands on top of that, you're going to feel real good about your cards, right? So... There's just a lot of ways to find value at the other rarities, and I feel real good about that. And there's also some big punches at Mythic, and I'm hoping to see at least one more. So we'll be back tomorrow with all the cards that are spoiled within the next 24 hours. But until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.